Now, I'm not going to claim to be the biggest Harry Potter fan in the world, but I did read the books. And I got to say, there's nothing I like as much in a story as that unexpected hero who's disguised as a bad guy. I want you to keep that in mind as we take a look at TMZ's motion to intervene. When the news broke that Morgan Tremaine was going to be testifying voluntarily in the Johnny Depp trial, TMZ filed an emergency motion and they asked the court to allow them to intervene in the case so that they could enforce their non-disclosure agreement with Morgan Tremaine to prohibit him from testifying about information he learned in the course of his employment with TMZ. And they did this for the purpose of protecting what they asserted to be their reporter's privilege. A declaration accompanying the motion indicated that Morgan Tremaine was indeed a former employee of TMZ at the time that TMZ had received the kitchen cabinet video from a confidential source. TMZ argued that Morgan's Tremaine, Morgan Tremaine's knowledge of who the confidential source was would have been hearsay, speculative conjecture. He did not directly participate in the procurement of that video and therefore wouldn't have had firsthand knowledge about where it came from or, or who it came from. They argued that TMZ must be able to keep its promises to confidential sources if they are going to be trusted by future individuals who might be inclined to provide information to them. Finally, they argued that Morgan Tremaine had a non-disclosure agreement with TMZ uh, as a result of his employment there. And so the request for intervention was essentially TMZ's way of asking the court to let us step in as parties here so that we can assert a journalistic privilege on Mr. Tremaine's behalf and then have you order him not to testify. Now, Virginia does recognize a newsman's privilege to maintain the confidentiality of sources of information. It reached this conclusion in a criminal case where a defendant sought to compel a news reporter to disclose the identity of a confidential source. And in that case, the Virginia Supreme Court concluded that while a newsman's privilege is not in and of itself a First Amendment right, it is related to the First Amendment and it is an important part of the news gathering function. So it recognized that such a privilege does exist, but also held that it was limited and would need to yield to the demands of a defendant's due process right to a fair trial. So while this is all well and good, the problem TMZ has with this motion in this situation is that nobody is compelling Morgan Tremaine to do anything. He is stepping up as a volunteer to testify. He can't legally be compelled into court in Virginia anyway. So there's nothing in this privilege that suggests that a newspaper has the right to overcome the voluntary choice of one of its employees to divulge that information. Simply put, if nobody is being compelled to testify, the privilege simply doesn't apply. Judge Azkarati, being the eminently fair judge that she is, gave TMZ an opportunity to argue their position to the court. So we're going to take a look at that and pay a little attention to how she responded to it. I gotta make this relatively short as you can understand, but I, I wanted to take up your motion. I have read your, read your motion and the declaration and everything attached to it in all the cases. Um, and I have reviewed it, so I'd rather you not regurgitate that based on our time limit, but anything you wish to add to that is fine. Um, if you want to, if I could focus you 
a little Please. bit. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, as far as um, your comments about uh, Virginia Rule of Evidence 2 colon 508, that's a criminal uh, rule of evidence, so I'm, uh, that's not, not, your strong, not your strongest argument. Uh, and as far as what goes on is when the, uh, or if the witness testifies, um, whether it's hearsay or it's third party knowledge, that's something I'll deal with at trial. So again, uh, not what I'm concerned with. As far as Supreme Court Rule 314, um, which um, I would like you to, to talk uh, a little bit about that as far as intervention. And I, I gotta tell you where I'm at right now, the concern, the, the, the issue I have uh, with the argument is intervention obviously would make you a plaintiff or defendant in the case and it has to deal with an issue that's germane to this case and this is a defamation case. So if you could, if you could just tailor your argument to that issue, sir. Sure. Well, it's never a good sign when the judge invites you to start your argument by saying, okay, so this part of it's trash and this other part of it's trash and all I really care about is this one particular thing that I'm going to communicate some skepticism to you about TMZ. Why the hell would you be a party to a defamation claim between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? Why don't you go ahead and just explain that bit to me? We see from right out of the gate that uh, Judge Azkarate is not going to be granting this motion, but she's going to do the polite thing, let the man have his opportunity to make his case, uh, but clearly she is coming from a position of skepticism. I'm happy to address the intervention for the record, Your Honor, Charles Tobin from the law firm of Ballard Spar. Yes, sir. You're representing TMZ. Um, which is the publisher of uh, news and entertainment uh, for the celebrity and entertainment industry. Um, and, Your Honor, I, 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 we're seeking to intervene simply to protect the relationship between reporters and their sources um, when it comes to reporting news in the public interest. We, as the court noted, we, we really don't have um, a, a dog in this hunt as far as Mr. Depp, uh, Ms. Heard. Uh, we're really here purely on the, the First Amendment based issue of uh, reporters' privilege and reporters and their sources. Your Honor, the intervention rule, um, as the court is aware, allows intervention uh, by anybody uh, where the issue is germane to the subject matter of the proceeding. Um, and certainly, Your Honor, the uh, purported testimony, the, the proffered testimony of a former employee of TMZ who um, purports to be in a position to uh, disclose confidential information learned during the work, during the operation of journalism during his work as a journalist um, is a germane issue that is being raised in this case. And, Your Honor, we would point the court to the Tafts, Fletcher, Malden, and Reed versus Southern Bank and Trust case, 213 Virginia Circuit, Lexus, 253. It's a Norfolk Circuit Court decision from 2013. And there it was an interpleader action. The funds had been interpleaded into the court by two trust companies that were fighting um, over it. Um, and the, the, the man who had sold his property, who had no interest in the funds themselves, interple intervened in the case because he was uncertain as to his liability for excess funds, which was an issue that was not directly in litigation between the two parties. It was not part of the cause of action between the two trusts fighting over the money that had been pleaded into the court. The circuit court held that uh, certainly the rights of that man was going to be affected by the decision making in the case. He would be prejudiced if he didn't have an opportunity to intervene and no party was in a position to assert his rights. And so similarly here, Your Honor, uh, TMZ is a, a news organization. It routinely accepts information as is common in journalism under exchanges of promises of confidentiality. If it is not able to intervene in this action, and neither of the parties is going to be in a position to assert the reporter's privilege. It is, um, it is TMZ's journalist privilege that we're talking about. Then the rights are certainly going to be purchased. Well, but if the witness, I, in all the cases, and I, and I reviewed the cases that you had, in those cases the witness was compelled to testify and came and was forced to testify, so there was an issue about the privilege of the witness. It's my understanding in this case this witness wants to testify and is not under subpoena. He has well, that's a little bit of a sticking point, isn't it? Uh, like we just said, reporter's privilege is about preventing the compelled disclosure of confidential sources, not 
the voluntary giving them up to the world, but we're going to see something fairly interesting happen right here. It's been subpoenaed, Your Honor. All right, subpoenaed. That's incorrect, Your Honor. He's voluntarily okay. Your Honor, I have a copy of a subpoena that was entered last night compelling Mr. Tremaine to give testimony in this case. And so he is coming under a compulsion under subpoena. Well, and and if he takes a stand and, and, he, and he asserts some sort of privilege, then that's something I will deal with at that time. So this is interesting because we see TMZ saying, no, he, he was subpoenaed. And then we see Ben Chu uh, asserting that, well, it wasn't by Johnny. So gosh, who could have issued the subpoena to Morgan Tremaine to make him compelled to testify? I don't know, but Adam Nadelhoff's little <gasps> scared little looking back and forth. Oh shit. And Elaine's sudden running up to the stand with a piece of paper to maybe do some candor to the court about who filed that subpoena. Yeah, those things say a lot, don't it? This was really funny to me because it just really highlights the gamesmanship that we're so used to seeing at this point in this trial from Amber Heard's team. They don't want Morgan Tremaine to testify. Don't even give me, don't even give me that. Come on. They subpoenaed him so that they could try to substantiate this man's position on behalf of TMZ that he was somehow there under a compulsion and to give him the standing that he would need to be able to assert that reporter's privilege. Judge Azkarati is not buying any of this. Sure, but uh, I'm here because of the scenario where he may not assert that privilege. Right, exactly, and that's, and, and that's, and and that's why I'm saying all your cases that you showed were the opposite, where they did assert the privilege. Well, it is it is a um, a unique situation. Right, where... and I understand you might have some some issues with a former employee, and you have some avenues to go um, deal with that. Uh, but, but once anyway. once he testifies and the privilege is waived, we have lost our opportunity. I'm just pausing here so that you can enjoy as I do the rapid, rapid attention that Elaine is doing throughout the course of this man's argument. She is on tenterhooks. She wants so badly for him to win this, but even she is, is uh, not going to be oblivious to the fact that he is definitely not winning this argument. Um, to, to intervene just, and to intercede. Right. And Your Honor, the privilege, you know, I know, Your Honor, you said you read the case law. I, I, I did. appreciate that. Yes, sir. But the privilege, it has been recognized by the Virginia Supreme right. Court in the Brown case and applied by the circuit courts uniformly. It is a very important underpinning of the relationship between reporters and sources and reporters and the public uh, without the ability to enforce uh, its promises. Uh, but by current employees or former employees, a news organization will have absolutely no control uh, over uh, being able to enforce its promises. Mm -hmm. And so we would ask the court to permit us to intervene mm -hmm. and to, to assert the, the privilege that belongs to TMZ, which is the organization, after all, Your Honor, that would be responsible to the source if this, the privilege were waived. All right. I understand, Mr. Tobin, your argument. I appreciate it very much. Okay. Did the parties wish to be heard? <laughs> We're going to skip over Ben Chu's argument because, number one, he filed a memorandum that you can look at on the Fairfax County website that is essentially everything that he said here in this argument. Uh, but also those arguments are essentially a repeat of what Judge Azkarati has already signaled is her main problem with this request TMZ is making. Namely, this is not an appropriate case for intervention. TMZ is not in a position to be either a defendant or a plaintiff to Johnny Depp in Amber Heard's defamation cases. So the relief that they're asking for uh, is simply not appropriate. Above and beyond the fact that there is no compulsion here that uh, the witness is trying to assert any type of privilege that needs to be protected. We are, though, going to take a look at what Elaine has to say. 
Your Honor, I would like to weigh in from just a different perspective, okay. and that is because we're trying to deal with some important issues of privilege, et cetera. But from our perspective, representing Ms. Hurd, um, we have issues with this witness separately, and I want to make them very clear for the record. This is somebody who should have been identified in discovery, was never. Second of all, well, Elaine is just going to use this opportunity to sort of vomit objections to this witness. I, I love that we can already see the little smile here on uh, Jessica Meyer. Oh, she just knows. Yeah, this is, uh, this is desperation on Team Amber, how much they don't want Morgan Tremaine to testify. It's not relevant whether, it, apparently what they're saying he's going to testify and we have not had the opportunity to. And Jessica Meyer there is all of us. <laughs> With the face palm and the temple rub, it's not relevant, Elaine. I'm sorry, your client lying out of her ass about leaking the video to TMZ and perjuring herself on the stand. Yeah. That's relevant. Discovered that um, is he's going to claim that someone leaked to TMZ that Ms. Heard was going to obtain uh, the TRO on that Friday and also leak the video, the, the kitchen video with Mr. Uh, Depp being rather violent. Um, and it, uh, I'm almost certain he's not going to claim it's Ms. Heard. So it's, I think it's never going to come in. Right. Ms. Bernhoff, um, I understand all that argument. Do you have any argument as to this particular motion? I, I, no, my, my Okay, well, then we can, we can address well, you. My point is, though, if you balance the prejudice versus the probative value, I, I don't even see how he can come in on foundation okay, well, or hearsay or relevance. That's just not part of this motion at this time. Thank you, ma'am. All right, Mr. Tobin, your, your motion, you get the last word, sir. Shut up, Elaine. We'll deal with your objection some other time. That has nothing to do with this reporter's privilege stuff and with what TMZ is asking. If you got a beef with him, bring it up some other occasion. Annoying. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, you know, I, I appreciate that um, the, the court Kind of shook your head when he made the snarky comment that this is not Edward R. Murrow. Obviously, the First Amendment applies to everybody, citizens, the New York Times, or TMZ. Um, and this is a First Amendment-based privilege. Your Honor, the uh, Philip Morris case is actually a very good case to answer Your Honor's question um, about the, uh, the, the intervention of somebody else in order to assert the privilege. Um, there, uh, ABC was a defendant in the case. And it moved in order to prevent other people, the phone company. Right. But um, they were airlines. already in the case in that particular I understand. Matter. There is no other mechanism, though. And so, I, you know, it's, it would be an interesting procedural issue for appeal, Your Honor, whether a journalist, um, a journalism organization or anybody else who's a First Amendment holder would be denied intervention on a constitutional-based privilege. Um, uh, so just a couple things I'm going to stop and point out here. Uh, first off, there's that little subtle implication. Well, this might be an issue for appeal. You know, when you have to try to threaten the judge with, I'm going to appeal your argument, uh, I'm going to appeal your ruling, you're definitely losing. <laughs> and at this point, uh, you should not expect that, that type of argument to revive you. Uh, if you haven't been able to put forth the reason why Judge Azkarati is wrong, the fact that you might waste your time and resources to appeal her uh, is not going to sway her one way or the other. It is simply going to annoy her and kind of highlight that y y you've, you've stepped over the line now from advocating your position to just being kind of obnoxious. The other thing I'm going to point out here, because it's what we're going to get to uh, at the end, is his repeated insistence, there's no other mechanism for us to do this. That's really his golden ticket that he is trying to assert to get Judge Azkarati to grant this motion, this idea that TMZ is just helpless. 
no possible way that they could protect their source if she doesn't step up and, and help them make sure that they can be the, all right, granted, not Edward R. Murrow level journalists, but nevertheless, uh, provide the news that, that they do using the, the mechanisms that they do. Just remember that. I also, just for the record and for the merits of the case, if I understood uh, Mr. Chu correctly, he said this is not an issue in the litigation. This does not relate to an issue in the litigation. Well, if it's not an issue in the litigation, if it's not part of a prima facie part of the defense, part of the allegations of the complaint, if it's impeachment evidence, if it's collateral to the main issues in the case, under the Brown v. Commonwealth decision under the Virginia Supreme Court, under the application of that privilege in the Philip Morris versus ABC News, it is not supposed to be compelled in this case. Which is, again, it's not being compelled, it appears. Well, he is appearing by subpoena, and it is a compulsory process, and he will have an obligation unless he asserts privilege right. under oath. But it is our privilege, Your Honor. It's, it's not an employee, a loyal or a rogue employee's privilege to waive uh, on behalf of its employer. This is an unusual situation. Um, <laughs> Tell but, me about but the law, But the answers are there um, in the law, this and is, it, is, it is a First Amendment concern. This, this is not the first unusual situation in this case. I can... For, for, either tell you for, Mr. Uh, uh, for anybody here, I'm sure. Yes, sir. So I, I like how we get to kind of have a look at, at Judge Ez Karate uh, as she's listening to his argument. She has a pretty good poker face, but also she kind of doesn't. Um, she, she tries so hard to stay very impassive. Uh, but you can see the little reactions, the little tightening of the lips, the little, I'm not going to smile at this, uh, you know, and then this, this release of humor at the end. I mean, come on, dude, you think this is the first unusual thing that's happened in a defamation trial between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, you know, maybe get over yourself a little. Let's go ahead and see how she rules. I appreciate you coming in today and I appreciate you, your Ron. arguments. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. In this matter, uh, under uh, Virginia Rules Supreme Court uh, 3 colon 14, a new party may intervene as a plaintiff or defendant to assert any claim or defense germane to the subject matter of the proceeding. A new party may not intervene unless they assert some right involved in the underlying litigation. A party is not entitled to intervene merely because a byproduct of the litigation adversely impacts them, and the decision to allow intervention is within the broad discretion of the trial court. Here, the rights asserted are not germane to the trial. The central issues in this case are whether defendant defamed plaintiff and whether plaintiff defamed defendant through a theory of vicarious liability. The issue of the confidentiality of sources has not come up as in other cases cited by EHM, which is the, the, the corporation that TMZ uh, belongs to, is under their umbrella. Um, in Brown uh, versus the Commonwealth, there was an attempt by the criminal defendant to subpoena institutions in order to obtain the name of the confidential source. When the author of the article was subpoenaed, she refused to identify her confidential source on the stand. And in this case, uh, it appears that the witness is willing to state uh, the name of the confidential source without being compelled voluntarily. Uh, whether that breaches a non-disclosure agreement between Mr. Tremaine and EHM is not germane to this matter and can be litigated in a separate matter if EHM so chooses. And while breaches of contract must be taken seriously, and the court does, any alleged breach is not germane to the underlying litigation here. That contractional action has no bearing on this case and is thus not germane to this litigation. Therefore, I'll deny the non-party HM Productions motion to intervene. Thank you, Your Honor. Right. Uh, Thank and there we have it. Motion is denied. TMZ is not going to be allowed to become a party to the case for purposes of asserting the reporter's privilege. But we're going to pay our attention to what Judge Azkarati just said right there at the end. The contract between TMZ and Morgan Tremaine, that's not germane to this case, and that can be asserted in a different action. That observation that TMZ has other avenues available to it to enforce its contract with Morgan Tremaine is the key to my theory that TMZ may in fact be an unexpected hero in this scenario. Now, they obviously have to put on a show, 
of protecting their confidential source. They can't just simply let it go as if they're not putting in any type of effort. But the law on this issue was so clearly unfavorable to them. And the reality is that the obvious mechanism to enforce their contract with Morgan Tremaine would have been to go and get an injunction against Morgan Tremaine to assert the rights that they have under the contract to prohibit him from being able to speak. That's the bottom line of what they're trying to accomplish here anyway, is to overcome his volunteering himself as a witness based on their contractual right to require that he maintains confidential the information that he learned during the course of his investigation. So I do have to wonder if uh, TMZ, you know, kind of knew what they were doing here. I'm not sure what Harvey Levin's role with TMZ is anymore, um, but he has a legal background, uh, was the owner of TMZ for, for quite a few years. So he's no fool when it comes to the types of processes that are available I got to tell you, to me, this whole motion in the Virginia court looks like TMZ taking a dive. They got into the ring to make it look like they were there to fight, but they weren't really ever having any intention of walking out of that courtroom a winner. That set the stage for Morgan Tremaine, and we're going to look at his testimony in the next episode. Join me there.